One of the things I'd like to talk about today, there's two things I'd really like to talk about with regards to this. One of them is the idea of assumed complexity, okay? Now bear with me on this. I know, I'm basically here to talk about Breaking Bad. Well, sort of. We'll get to that in just a moment. But let's talk about a game called Illusion of Gaia, which, by the way, it's, I, I do actually recommend that for anybody who hasn't played it. It's a rather nice RPG on the SNES. At the time, it was pretty unusual for RPGs. It did a lot of things differently than what was the accepted norm at the time. And its story is actually really hard to actually understand, <laughs> due mostly to translation issues. But if you get it, it's kind of engaging in its own way. In Illusion of Gaia, there's a quote. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time, and in its own way, it speaks to my own philosophy about life in general. And that quote is, paraphrased, It is terrible when someone loses their life. What took years to build up is snuffed out in a moment. What that quote means, I could do an entire video on, but let's just talk about one aspect of it right here, and that is that a person is complicated. A human being is a complex individual. Now, I want you right there, however old you are, to think about 20 years, okay? Now, when I say this, I'm usually talking about 20 years you remember, 20 years of adulthood, you know? What point at which you would consider that varies, and some people have better memories of their childhood than others. I, for example, remember when I was four. My sister only remembers when she was about 11 on, and so forth and so on. It, it varies from person to person. But from that point, 20 years, or, or if you're not that old, you know, whatever, something along those lines, right? Try to think about that for a moment. Now, try to think about a 20-year-old person, okay? A 20-year-old, all things considered, is pretty young, wouldn't you say? Now, granted, I'm a little prejudiced on the matter, but I would call someone who is 20 years old still pretty young. We definitely qualify that as a young adult, someone who has barely begun their life, someone who is, literally just has one foot out the door. But think about what 20 years means. Think about everything that has happened to you in 20 years. Now, if we were to, if you're going to call it technically on me here, I can go ahead and shave that down to 10, but I'm only going to allow that because that just proves my point even better. Because 10 points, 10 years, excuse me, still gets across the point exactly how I want to. That's a long period of time. A lot of things happen in 10 years. A lot of things happen in one year. If you asked me right now to summarize everything that happened in my life, of only the things that are of major importance over the last 10 years, I'd be sitting here all day, and probably several days after that. A lot happens in that kind of time. A lot goes into that kind of a life. In fiction, we sort of naturally assume that that doesn't matter. Now, let me take a step back and try to qualify this a bit. When you were watching, I'm just going to pull an example at random, okay? The original Star Wars trilogy, okay? You see a stormtrooper get shot. <sighs> he's on the screen for three seconds, he's shot, he's dead. Now, you don't really feel anything about that. Now, that was partially by design. The whole point of the faceless enemy is to dehumanize them. That's a common fictional trope in order to utilize to make sure that the audience doesn't identify too much with a certain group or an individual or whatever. However, that person... Now, okay, granted, it, it's kind of been retconned that they were clones. Let's ignore that. But nevertheless, let's just assume one. Let's just assume that Stormtrooper was one year old. What happened to that Stormtrooper in one year? Think about the last year of your life and what happened over that year. Now, granted, my last year has been kind of hectic. <laughs> my health kind of went like this in January. And to be perfectly blunt, I'm still recovering. I... <laughs> nothing else for it, right? But nevertheless, even if we just summarized health problems as one thing, I could still give you a rather major list of major life-impacting events that happened over me over the course of one year. And I'm, I'm still not quite getting to my main point, so just bear with me, but my point is we automatically accept that. Now let's go ahead and bring Breaking Bad into this. What Breaking Bread Bad did for us was it gave us a wonderful insight into the mind of that stormtrooper. 
Now, this is a little different than a stormtrooper, but nevertheless, how many times have you watched... Uh, this is true more in the 80s and 90s than more modern fiction, but bear with me. How many times did you watch a crime drama, for example, where the crime boss shows up, and he's a... Um, you know, a tertiary character or something like that, or ter he's probably one of the main antagonists, but he's not actually the the frontline guy. He's not the one the characters are interacting with. He has a few lines and he dies, probably betrayed by one of his own people, or maybe he ends up getting brought down by the guys. You know, you get my point, right? Breaking Bad shows us that person and how he became that person. Now, this ties into my second point, which I'll get into in a moment, so just keep that nugget in the back of your mind. But what Breaking Bad did was actually showed us something that fiction so rarely does. It showed us the individual process. It showed us the years, uh, two or three, I believe. I actually don't remember off the top of my head. Forgive me. Of what happens to change an individual, or I don't want to actually say that because I actually disagree with that, but let's just go ahead and say the choices that someone makes. And I love that for one very simple reason. While it is very realistic, which I admittedly do not like in fiction, it is also extremely believable, which I very much do like in fiction. And to explain myself a little bit better... I don't know why I keep coming to Star Wars today. Forgive me. The, the trilogy prequels, okay? If you asked me... I've played a game with my viewers before and with several of my friends in real life. Fix blah in as few changes as possible. And I've given a few of my answers on that, but I'm going to give you the answer that I give for the entire prequel trilogy, okay? One change. Now, granted, this is kind of cheating. Make the prequel trilogy about Anakin's descent into the dark side. Now, any of you out there who's actually a fan of Star Wars is probably saying, well, duh! But that's my point. Someone doesn't just, and suddenly they're evil. That's not how that works. Not in fiction, not in real life. You don't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to go slaughter younglings. No, there's a process. You are affected, you are impacted, you accept, you tolerate. We as human beings are adaptable. That is our, our greatest strength and our greatest weakness in a nutshell. We are adaptable beings. Mentally, emotionally, physically. Seeing Anakin Skywalker's adaptation into the dark side as he tries to cope with everything that he's been going through, his slow descent would have made a brilliant trilogy, in my opinion. Breaking Bad does exactly that and shows us that aspect of character development. Shows us Darth Vader a.k.a. Heisenberg, and how he became that. And that's one of the things I really love about it, and the, the beautiful insight into that, which ble leads me beautifully into my next point. You will never hear me call him by his other name. I'm going to be calling him Heisenberg this whole video. I'll talk, talk about why uh, right about now, I guess, because... <sighs> Say my name. It's such a famous scene. And I could do, uh, again, I could probably do an entire video just on that scene, but I'm going to, and I feel like I'm taking a bit of a risk here because I feel like Breaking Bad fans are going to come at me and tell me I'm an idiot and have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I don't actually intend any insult or offense. I'm just trying to share my enthusiasm for certain aspects of the show, even though I didn't really like the show that much overall. It was so beautifully done, I had to comment on this. I had to. Say my name, okay? What if you were asked, you know, what is your name? Now, some people would answer that just like that. I've noticed it kind of varies from person to person. If you asked me that, my answer would change depending on who you are. I have too many names. I have too many monikers. I'm, I don't know if this is a normal thing or not, but I've gone by many, many different names in my life. Now, if you asked me for real... If it was truly a question, what is my name? Well, I'm not, I'm not actually going to tell you what that is. But I know what that answer is. In other words, I know whom I identify as. When I think of myself, that is what comes to mind. Say my name. Heisenberg. Not that other name. That's not him. He identifies 
as Eisenberg. That is who he is in here. And in my opinion, that's the po that's where that really matters. It's one of the reasons I always got a little irritated you know, in real life when someone asks you, well, what's your real name when they try to qualify? What's your real name? That doesn't help. <laughs> People have different definitions of real name. Some people say it's what's on your birth certificate. Some people say it's what's on your driver's license. I happen to be a person where that's a different thing in my case, just to give you an example of what I'm talking about. You get my point. So, real name, in my opinion, in my voice, is who you truly identify yourself as. Now, again, I know this probably sounds like duh to all of you who really watch the show. I apologize, but I am going somewhere with this. <sighs> I'm almost hesitant to talk about this. Because I empathize with Heisenberg. Now, before any of you out there freak out, I, I know I tend to really speak fondly of villains of, <laughs> of fiction and, and how much I understand them and whatnot. Don't, don't read too much into that. Usually it's because a villain is more well-written or more fleshed out than a, than a hero within a work of fiction. But it's also because a really well-designed villain... This actually goes to a question I was asked in my uh, personal message recently. A really well-designed villain is someone who is understandable, who isn't just... I'm evil. Now you can do an I'm evil villain and actually make it work. That's that's the fourth type of villain. I've talked about this before. You know, just the psychotically vil evil, evil villain who you still enjoy seeing on screen, but they're just evil. That's basically them in a nutshell. No, I'm talking about a villain who you understand why. Why they chose to be who they are. Why their name is Heisenberg and not the other name. Let's talk about a strange concept because this actually applies in real life. Let's talk about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Coincidental, honestly. This is just what I was wearing today. <sighs> over here we have light, okay? And over here we have darkness. And right in the middle we have the in-between, which is what I'm wearing right now. Now, all three of these things have their own allure, right? The light is what you espouse to if you're trying to be good or helpful or wonderful or benevolent or whatever, right? And the darkness is, is the, the point of, of uh, aggression, force, um, uh, what's the word, uh, ambition, you know, things like that, right? And of course the in-between is the eschewed, you know, someone who is begrudged of light and dark, someone who is off, separate, alone. All these things have their own appeal to people, right? In real life, speaking generally, and I, I hate to speak generally, this next topic I'm going to talk about, I'm going to be a little more deliberately vague than I usually am. And I don't actually like doing that, but I feel it's necessary in this case because I don't want to draw this into a political debate or any other sort of thing like that, okay? So, just to make that clear. In real life, this is some kind of success, right? Over here on the light side, the good. We have done well by ourselves. We've made it. We have a nice house, we have a family, or maybe we, we live on our own, but nevertheless we enjoy our life, we're doing a career we enjoy. There are different, you know, it, it's not an absolute, it's not binary, there's a gradient over here, but nevertheless we are, have accomplished something that we are happy with and successful with. This can be several different things. It could be the same thing, just on a darker nature, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. But it could also be, you know, having completely failed, or, or living within the dregs, or the druck, or living on the streets, or something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> and so, and then we have an in-between, which in real life equates to normalcy, a normal life best described, I think, as nothing really interesting happens, but you're still happy. You're still content. You may not, you know, go visit Singapore or Peru, as my aunt is going to lately, <laughs> or recently. Or, ah, in, in a few years she'll be going. And it may not be anything along the lines of, you know, descending into a horribleness or, or, or pulling off an incredible heist or a criminal activity, or trying, or donating all your money to charity, or anything like that. You may not accomplish anything, but nevertheless you are content with your existence. Here's the part I'm going to be a little more vague about. Because on this line, 
just about anything on this line, one person or another is going to find acceptable. Now we're getting into a little bit into opinion territory here. But in general, if you're on this line somewhere, you are at least existing. Or possibly even living. But when you take a step back here, that's where we get into another category. I don't really have a good word for it. I call it mundanity. Like I said, I'm going to try to be vague about this. Because if you're living a normal life, you have bills, trying to pay off your car and the credit card, and maybe your student loans, that kind of a thing. But you're managing. You still have, you know, fungible currency at the end of the, the week in order to go spend on whatever. Yeah, I know that's not really applicable, but you get the point. This over here, this mundanity, I'm going to describe with a simple metaphor, and I'm going to try to leave it at that. This is the state of existing in a life, or an existence, or a survival, where you are just sitting there pushing the rock up the hill, but you don't actually have the strength, or the tools, or the means, or the will, or the whatever to get anywhere with it. So all of your effort, and all of your force, and everything you can muster is keeping it where it is. And any time you slip, you lose purchase. And from that point on, this is now where you're at. And you'll never be able to regain that ground. I know many people, including myself at certain points in my life, who have lived with mundanity. And how horrible it really is. To live in such an existence or survival knowing with absolute certainty that it's never going to get better. That you have actually succeeded at the point at which you're at now. I actually talked about this with regards to Grand Theft Auto recently, if you'll remember. That this is the quote-unquote American dream. The reason I bring this up with regards to Breaking Bad is I find that because each of his, quote, you know, his descent into Heisenberg, into the drug lord, do not see him that person. I am of the opinion that whatever he went through before is what he is the way he is today. How ground down he must have been by his mundanity. How absolutely drilled into his skull must that have despair and that utter crushing weight of no house must have weighed upon him. And the final insult you have can Somewhere along the list had been a relief that it was going to end rather than having to continue on like that. But then he has to think about his family, who are, of course, going to be in crushing debt if he doesn't do something. What do you do in that circumstance? Most people keep going. Most people, in my experience in real life, just keep enduring because they're already ground down. There's no try. There's no trying. There's no hoping. You're already at as good as it's getting. Some people try for something amazing over here and succeed. Many fail. Heisenberg went over here. That's why I really wanted to emphasize this because this is the thing that I find fascinating. This is why I empathize with this man. I have lived in real life in places where drugs and drug lords and that sort of thing, which I don't actually want to qualify with a, with a generic statement, are a thing, are a commonality, are a way of life. It's not pleasant. I want to make that absolutely clear, and I, I applaud the show for showing with absolute certainty that it is not pleasant. It is not, rom well, I mean, it's romanticized to some extent because it has to be. They can only show so much, but it is not glorified. It has shown just how horrible and degenerate it is to the dealers, to the movers, to the buyers, and to everyone attached. It is a dirty business. But it's still better than what he had. 
You see where I'm going with this? This is why I empathize with Heisenberg. This is why I find this character so fascinating, is because it is so understandable and so believable to see this man who has been buried under a rock for so long say, screw it! I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the abyss. And over the course of the show, we see him take those steps, make those compromises, be turn to the dark side, become the Darth Vader. And every step of the way, I just can't help but shed a tear, because I don't blame him. Do you? And I mean this kind of sincerely. If anybody would like to comment on this, on the video, feel free. Because I don't blame him for what he did. And I know that sounds horrible. But that's my point. This is one of the reasons I don't like watching shows like this, or movies, or video games like this. is because they hit so close to home for me. This is... <laughs> he says it himself. There's a line he has, forgive me for paraphrasing, but it's something along the lines of, I felt, you know, when I was doing this, I did it for me. I did it because it made me feel... alive. Because that horrible, terrible, degenerate life was still life to this man. And he had not lived before. He had merely existed, or, in my opinion, more accurately, survived. That's why I emphasize that scene so, so much. Say my name. Because it wasn't just a, a, a oh, I get you know a, a, a regretful conclusion for him. It was not something that he was ashamed of. It was not something he was trying to hide, even for himself or for others. He was so blatantly prideful. Uh, granted, in general, but I mean about this specifically, he proclaimed it. Say my name.